During the the holidays, I don't I don't watch TV or even have a TV. But my uh, sister and brother they they love to watch movies. So we <laughs> had some movies going in the background during our holiday celebration. And one of the films that I wasn't wasn't paying attention to was uh, an older film called The Martian. And in The Martian, I was struck by the idea that this character was was really out there. <laughs> he was literally out there stranded on Mars while people back on Earth and in a orbiting space station tried to figure out how to how to rescue this guy. And what intrigued me was that nobody really wanted to uh, be straightforward with what was going to happen or how to save this guy. Uh, the space station people didn't want to tell NASA what they were going to do. And NASA really didn't come clean with how precarious the whole situation was. And then, of course, the guy stranded on Mars was the, the most precarious position of all. And they didn't really want to tell him how dangerous and how risky the whole operation was. They just gave him the information he needed to know at various times in order to get him to the next place. But all the while, it meant he was going to have to blast off in a rocket ship from Mars at a speed that that actually wasn't going to get him out of the Martian atmosphere, then he was going to have to leave the spaceship and propel himself with escaping gas from his own spacesuit, and then grab a hold of a tether at the at the orbiting space station. It was it was a very daunting and frightening prospect. And if anybody had told this guy how it was all going to go down, he he would have never left the Martian landscape. And the moral of the story was. We don't need to solve all the problems all at once. We just need to solve one problem at a time. Welcome. Welcome to Illinois Bridging Awareness. I'm Stanley Smith. And at Illinois Bridging Awareness, I think we're we're navigating that that place, the place between our day-to-day -day reality and whatever new reality we feel is coming into the world. And because of that, I think we all feel a little apprehensive. On last week's call, some some picked up on this and describes described us as being a little angst filled. And this week on the uh, various channels, Signal, and um, and on Telegram, and on our in our text chat, I was picking up on the idea that some of us, you know, and rightfully so, find it challenging being around negative people. And the whole idea of, you know, should we try to distance ourselves and separate ourselves from these people or or remain engaged? And I I think that's a rhetorical question because I think our place and time in the world calls us to be engaged. I remember that uh, when I was in college, we had to attend a forum series of cultural events. And one of these was uh, musical programs. One was a Beethoven symphony. I remember, <laughs> I remember, uh, in our row, my friends, we were annoyed when people stood up and applauded after the first movement without realizing that, you know what, this song was was not over yet. There were other other uh, movements and sections to follow. And part of that is, uh, you know, we need to be aware which which part of the story are we in? Which part of the um, musical number are we in? And a number of given works. There's the Allegro, the Andante, and the Intermezzo, Intermezzo movements. There's the the fast part, the part that we all like, the catchy tune, and then there's the uh, intermediate part, which is kind of slower and somewhat daunting. And then, of course, there's the Andante, which can sometimes come across as the as the downright depressing. We sometimes need to take note of which part of the song we're in and be aware of it instead of trying to get away from some parts of the song, we need to probably appreciate where we are in context of the entire piece. Um, during last week's call, it, it occurred to me that um, in this time of, of Advent and Christmas celebration, we could we could look at the example of Jesus and think, well, what part of the song was he in in, in his earth, earth, earthly life? Was he in the happy part or the, the more uh, intermediate part or the more somber part? And to me, it begs the question, in the example of Jesus's life, could we really say that Jesus was a happy person or or even a positive person? We, we all experience disruption in our lives, and probably truth be known, this is, this is a necessary um, 
phenomenon we need to experience and move through in order to connect the dots and solve one problem to take us on to our ultimate destination. When uh, I was attending church before the pandemic, we had a, an excellent sermon by one of our ministers, Joyce Shin, and she preached about the Antonin Dvorak Symphony, the New World, New World Symphony, and it was about music. And she preached the sermon about how in this particular piece, the New World Symphony, Antonin Dvorak starts off with a with a lovely melody. We we love the melody. And then we move into a disruptive, chaotic section of the piece, which is supposed to uh, embody and illustrate the, the new world, the creation of the new world, and all the disruption that entails, the cacophony of sounds and discordant notes, which is all very much unfamiliar to us. Joyce said, during this piece of the, of the mu music, we we long for the, the beautiful melody to return, the part that we're familiar with. And she said, but the, the beautiful music, the familiar melody, it it never it never does return. Instead, after the cacophony of the disruption, a new a new melody emerges, something new and pleasing in a new way. The old is replaced by by something new, a new beautiful melody. If we all appreciate where we are, whether it's angst angst filled or maybe rather negative, maybe we can appreciate it for being this disruptive phase. And as much as we might appreciate and long for the familiar to return, the familiar melody, we can be open and appreciate and be aware when the new thing is entering our world. These are important things to think about, especially as we approach the new year. We can all take a look and see what, what isn't working in our lives and what what can we leave behind? No matter how much we've enjoyed it or appreciated it, maybe it's time to set that aside and move on. For me personally, in these last few months, I've I've had an opportunity to see and recognize mistakes. And some of them are, are very small and insignificant, but for me, it's been uh, an interesting exercise to be aware that, oh, there's there are words that either I've mispronounced or uh, used in the wrong context or facts I've presented that have been in error or just errors in perception. And to me, that is that is something important to leave behind some of our preconceived ideas that we're right about everything and be aware that uh, we have made mistakes and continue to make mistakes and take those into account. So I'm putting that on my list of New Year's resolutions to continue to, to look at that and to be open to that and see it and to be more aware. I think we can all take a note of from that and make these minor adjustments that we need to that will help us navigate this strange space and this sometimes angst-filled space between the old and the new as we all emerge in the new year into a new beautiful tune together. If you would like to join us at Illinois Bridging Awareness, we have a weekly Saturday call, statewide call every Saturday at 9 a.m. Central Time. I will include my, my email in the description of this video and I'll be happy to send you an invitation. And I look forward to seeing you very, very soon.